Welcome to the NCDWI Guy podcast, where defenders of the Constitution assemble to prepare for courtroom battle, and firm owners gather to develop marketing strategies that will revolutionize the practice of criminal defense. Here's your host, the NCDWI Guy, Jake Minnick. Hello, fellow freedom fighters, and welcome to episode 159 of the NCDWI Guy podcast. On today's episode, we are talking about the dream job, building your dream job, building your dream practice. And I am going to explain step by step, clear, black and white, how you can have the perfect law firm, the perfect job. If you believe that, then this is going to be a disappointing episode because that's definitely not going to happen. There is no, there is no perfect, perfect law firm. There's no dream job that has come to its perfection because building a dream job is a journey. It's not a destination. Not to get too woo woo on you with uh, with this like journey versus destination. Uh, thought process, but there is never going to be a time when you walk into the office and think to yourself, this is this is as good as it could ever be, and now I can just coast from here. First of all, it could always get better. That's actually part of the fun of it is that it could always get better. You could always have a more fulfilling law practice, a more fulfilling uh, a job, a more fulfill- fulfilling um, a career, a more fulfilling profession as you are building one day at a time. And the other, the other part of it is that you can't coast. Once you start to coast, then you, you automatically are headed in the wrong direction. Once you flatline in life, you're dead, right? Once you flatline, once you start to, to coast on that on that uh, heart monitor, that means that you have died. The flat line is is no good. You gotta have you gotta have those those ups and downs, those peaks and valleys, um, uh, some new goal that you are striving towards in order to be fully alive in reality. I mean, the, you you gotta have that up and down movement on the heart monitor, but in uh, the practice of law. In life, the same thing applies as well. You've got to have those those peaks and valleys, um, that next mountain that you are trying to climb in order to continue to be fully engaged. And those mountains will change, as we will talk about a little bit later in the episode today. So, a couple of uh, episodes back on episode one fifty seven, I talked about avoiding burnout. So, this is kind of the flip side of that episode. This episode isn't about how to avoid burning out although I, I do think it is the the uh the other side of the coin so to speak but this is what what if you step back and could build the perfect job for yourself if you if you were to basically say i want to go on indeed.com and uh you know what wh- whatever uh you know whatever uh job service online whatever job listing online go online and I am going to start searching for jobs and I'm going to find my dream job. That's what this episode is about, is how do you create a practice that you can then kind of see and feel as your dream job? So uh, something that is is really important. It's important to the profession. It's important for us to to focus on. It's important for us to to try to work hard at. And so that's what we're really talking about today is the um creating that 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 uh that dream job for yourself. So the the first thing I'm going to talk about five specific points in building your dream job. And the first one is something that I talk about a lot but that is a mission based job it's got to be a job that has a compelling why a compelling reason that you step into the office when you walk up to your office every day and open the front door of your office you step inside your building maybe this is home office maybe this is is a actual office space 
Do you know why you're coming into the office? Do you have a sense of purpose, a sense of mission? There is a reason that in the military, they call a, a job, a task, a mission. That's what it's referred to as. It's a mission. We are going to go execute this mission, right? Because there is some underlying compelling reason that this is important to the overall success of this military campaign. There is a reason that this particular uh, uh, tactical movement needs to occur. So the, the, the military understands this sense of going on mission, but it's just as important in business. We have to be able to explain to our troops, which is our employees or actually primarily ourselves, why we are taking the actions that we are taking. John Maxwell, as I've said frequently on the podcast, always says um, the first person that you need to lead is yourself. You need to lead yourself first. And so if you don't believe in the why, it's going to be very difficult to get other people on board. Um Stephen Covey talks about beginning with the end in mind, beginning with the end in mind. And this is what he has to say about beginning with the end in mind. The most effective way I know to begin with the end in mind is to develop a personal mission statement or philosophy or creed. It focused on what you want to be, character, and to do, contributions and achievements, and on the values or principles upon which being and doing are based. If you don't have a mission statement, a philosophy, a creed, then all of your action doesn't make sense. That's what having a mission statement, a philosophy, a creed does. It gives organization priority, a hierarchy to your actions. And you need that priority in action. You need it personally. And if you have anybody else working at your law office, they need to understand the troops, the team needs to understand why what they are doing matters to the larger overall mission. And that mission, generally speaking, should be something focused on on other than you. It should be external. It should be something that you are trying to to build in the world, some some greater good that you are trying to to bring. Uh, and I think, honestly, being a criminal defense attorney, this is actually something to me that is is relatively compelling, uh, easy, compelling. Why? Um, be, because of the people that we are able to help. Our mission is very simple, helping good people in their darkest hour. That's our mission helping good people in their darkest hour. When somebody walks into the office after being charged with a DWI, there is a sense of fear, anxiety, unknown, uh, uh, worry about going to jail, worry about loss of job, worry about how their family is going to react. Am I going to lose my spouse? You know, Am I going to be able to, to continue to have visitation rights with my children? Um, you know, uh, am I going to go bankrupt as a result of this? You know, uh, how can I kick this horrible addiction that I have? I mean, there's so many unknowns. Um, of fear and anxiety is just crippling this person, and we get to be the first place, an initial point of contact to help bring that person hope, to help bring that person back from the hit of despair that they are stuck in. And it is a beautiful, a beautiful opportunity. It's a, it's a beautiful profession, um, a beautiful calling because of that. And so I think that that is just so important. And again, it's important to lead yourself first, because if you have that mission of what we are, what we are doing as an organization, very clear in your own mind, you can then paint that picture for your employees, for your team, for your associates. Peter Thiel, who is the uh, one of the founders of PayPal, uh, has this to say about communicating that mission. You'll attract the employees you need if you can explain why your mission is compelling. 
Not why it's important in general, but why you're doing something important that no one else is going to get done. Why is your mission unique? Why is what you are doing as an attorney, what your law firm, Law Offices of John Doe, Law Offices of Jane Doe, insert your name, why is your business uniquely doing something that no other firm is doing in the marketplace? You know, you can say, well, well I, I'm, I'm one of many criminal defense lawyers in the area. I like help you. What is it that you're doing that's different? If you can't put, put a finger on that, if you can't uh, grapple with how that looks different, then you need to really, really challenge yourself on that front. It's going to be incredibly important in terms of getting other people onto the wagon with you in the direction that you're moving, the direction that you're trying to drive your law firm, your organization. Um, and it's also going to be this competitive differentiating factor within the marketplace. If you can differentiate yourself from the competition because you are doing something that no other law firm is doing, whether that's in terms of case prep, whether that's in terms of the training that you send your people to, whether that's because of the locations that you cover, whether that's because of the resources that you provide to your clients, whether that's because of the, the experience that you um, uh, allow, allow for your clients to go through, whatever that differentiating factor or combination of factors is, you need to recognize it, understand it, and then become hell-bent on making it a priority to improve on. Mission is everything when it comes to the success of your firm, but also in building a dream job. Having a sense of mission is if you want to live the dream, if you want to live the dream every day, start with the mission of your firm. There was a recent experience that I had that is just so funny to me. I was I was hanging out with a friend, great guy. And so we were, we were um, on a run together. And uh, we were talking about our uh, careers, and he was explaining that he basically works virtually, uh, is is over a team of um, basically uh, uh, a few few people that are also virtual, uh, and, and basically the company that he works for helps um, uh, get pets uh, overseas out of the country when their owners basically have to move to a foreign country. So they basically are the logistical operation of getting these um, pets uh, to the new location where their owners are, that they um, you know, basically have to go all, through all these steps. It's a very expensive process. Uh, their, their clients are typically very high-end uh, uh, the, uh, very demanding. These are high transactions for this. And as he was explaining this to me, I could not have been less interested in any job. I, I was thinking to myself, this sounds like the worst, the absolute worst job to be a part of. So for any of you like, you know, uh, pet owners out there, I have a dog and a cat, so don't, don't think that I'm some animal hater or something, but it just, the, the, doing the logistics of this pet transfer, I, I could not have been less compelled to, to be, Concerned. It was just one of the few things that somebody's told me that they have done where I was just thinking that is, that sounds miserable to me. And the funny thing was, is as we continued talking, and I was talking about being, um, you know, a criminal defense attorney, I I really got the sense that he 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 uh, really had a, had some disdain for. Uh, the defense and and what um, you know uh, why are you why are you doing this and so the funny thing was to me he felt the exact same way about my role my job as I did about his so there was just this mutual mutual feeling of like how could anybody ever ever do that and so I think it's important to find that thing that you are passionate about to find that thing that is going to compel you to to take action something that you are uh, really really drawn to because otherwise you know what what is what is the point of going to work other than just a paycheck what is the point of doing the thing that you're doing if you're not 
engaged with the sense of mission, then it's a problem. So you've you've got to be really solid on your mission. You know, I I've said this this so many times, but if you want to have a dream job, a dream practice, you had better have a better a, a very compelling mission, a very compelling why to what what brings you into the law office personally and what your company, what your law firm is bringing to the marketplace. So number one, uh, in terms of creating a dream job, a dream practice, be mission-based. Number two, delegate tasks that suck energy, that suck energy. So, I mean, it's, it, whether it just sucks or just sucks energy, I guess there's really no differentiation, but delegate tasks that suck energy. If, you, if you're if you being drained, then more often than not, there are parts of your practice that you really don't enjoy. For some people that might be taking a case to trial. For somebody, for some people that might be um, uh, uh certain client phone calls for some people that might be the trust account for some people that might be marketing for some people that might be uh, uh, hiring and training um, for some people that might be opening new case files whatever your specific tasks are that you disdain that you really do not enjoy doing you have got to delegate those you have to fire yourself from those tasks if you want to build a dream job. So I talked about this. Uh, I won't get too deep on this one because I talked about this uh, a little bit on avoiding burnouts. And so go back and listen to that episode. But you got to create a list of tasks that pull you down, that suck your energy. Brian McGill says that enthusiasm is the energy and force that builds literal momentum of the human soul and mind. I'm going to say that again. Enthusiasm is the energy and force that builds literal momentum of the human soul and mind. If you're not enthusiastic about what you are doing, then there is a issue. There is a problem. You cannot have a dream job. But you know, I've 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 heard different people uh, say that there used to be a bailiff at the courthouse that every time I would um, I would see him, I would ask, you know, how are you doing? He would say, live in the dream. And sometimes I feel like he meant it. And sometimes it felt like he, the, he was saying it sarcastically. And, you know, he always had a great attitude, was always, you know, always smiling. Um, but that was his response, no matter when you asked him. And if you want to have a dream job, then When somebody asks you, how are you doing? Your response should be with no element of sarcasm, I'm living the dream. Literally the practice, the the job, the the, uh, career that I have allows for the life that I want to, that I want to lead, that I feel fulfilled in leading. And so you have to have uh, that enthusiasm. And so things that create a energy suck an enthusiasm suck, an enthusiasm void need to get delegated. They need to get eliminated. Put it onto somebody else's plate. You will find people that want to do these tasks that you think nobody on earth could want to do. Again, if if you if you had told me before this conversation with uh with my friend, you know, uh, okay, there's a there's a job out here, and basically you're working from home virtually. You're not going to be around other people, and you are basically going to work with really rich people to help them get their pets transported from the United States to other countries where they are moving to. Uh, and these people are kind of uh, nightmares to deal with because they're very uh, high needs, and 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 uh, you know it's going to be a difficult task. And then I, I would just think, who in, in on God's green earth? would want to do that type of job. I would think that this is just something that nobody in their right mind would ever consider for a moment doing. But these people want to do it. These people want to want to make that happen. They want to make this 
what they're building their career around. So just because you don't want to do it doesn't mean that nobody wants to do it. You have to be in a place where you can uh, look at that, look at that uh, 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 list of items that you're trying to delegate and figure out how to get some of that off your plate. So you can go in enthusiastically to the places that you need to be spending your time. So number two, Delegate tasks that suck. Hey, podcast listeners, I want to briefly interrupt today's episode to invite you to join me at the inaugural Freedom Fighter Summit in Asheville this October. This in-person only event is designed for growth-minded lawyers determined to take their criminal defense practice to the next level. Due to the size of the summit's venue, there are a limited number of seats available. Don't miss out on the incredible lineup of speakers and spectacular networking opportunity that this summit provides. For more details, visit www.minniclaw.com forward slash summit. Enter the promo code NCDWIGUY, all lowercase, all one word at checkout for $150 off your summit ticket. Look forward to seeing you there. Now back to the show. Number three for building your dream practice, your dream job, create your own perks. This was something that Tom McGraw, uh, who I worked with in the career development office at Christendom College, uh, taught me. And uh, we, we were small, small school. He was in charge of the uh, uh, career development office. I was uh, assistant. You know, I was, I was working as a um, you know, as a, a as a student in the career development office for about ten hours a week, you know, very very low level. I was, you know, at the time I think he was I was his primary assistant, and so I would come in and we would we would do some work. But we started every day by shooting hoops. We would start every day by taking some free throws, some three pointers, and for about fifteen minutes we would run around in the gym. And so, you know, part of this, I think on his end was to get, to get, uh, the, the brain flowing, you know, kind of be, be, be moving, get some, um, you know, uh, adrenaline pumping, get the juices flowing. But he told me once, you know, part of the reason that I do this is I love playing basketball and, uh, I I'm going to create my own perks, uh, you know, that, that he had been, been taught this from one of his mentors that it, in certain, in certain jobs or really in every job, you've got to create your own perks. And so for him, the fact that our office was in the gym, we we're right next to the, to the, uh, right next to the hoops. He was like, this is one of the perks of the job. You know, this was a small school, you know, the benefits were not great. The salary was not great. You know, he was there in a, in a mission sense, uh, uh you know, former, former alumni of the school. He was there cause he felt compelled by the mission of the school and, um, and really wanted to help the students, but because the benefits salary and all those things were not were not the greatest his mindset was you know I'm going to create my own perks and shooting the hoops was and so we need to do that I mean we need to create our own perks you know um almost every criminal defense attorney uh has the ability to create their own schedule now you're going to think you're off your rocker uh Manick, you're off your rocker I've got to go to four counties um, of, you know, I've got traffic court in three, I've got a felony plea in another, I'm driving like a madman to these different places. And to some extent, you're right. There, there are days when your, your calendar is outside of your control, but I have seen so many attorneys do the practice of criminal defense in different ways. I've seen attorneys who handle court all day long and they schedule appointments with clients beginning at 6 p.m., to uh 10 p.m. you know that you know that they're they're in the office at night time with clients maybe they don't get into court until later maybe they're only meeting with clients a couple of times a week i i've seen attorneys that only come to court in the afternoon and again this is very much dependent on your particular location and practice uh, uh practice area locational practice area but they basically just you know uh, tell their clients look i'm I've, i'm going to be coming in 
on your case at 2 p.m. Now you've got to look at it and say, does this make sense? Am I going to be able to effectively communicate this to my clients? Am I going to be able to give my clients the experience that I want to give them? But there is flexibility in um, in in when you come to court. You know, do, do I is my my goal to be one of the first people in the courtroom and get done early in the day? Um, you know, do I do I work in a place where it's just so hard to get anything done before eleven o'clock? So I'm just not going to show up at court before eleven. Find where there is freedom in the in the calendar. Find where there is opportunity to to really create the schedule that you want to create and exploit that. Don't let other people control your entire day. Don't let the uh, the the DA, the judge. Um, uh, you know, control the the entire movement of the day. You do have um, a, a pretty large element of control in that arena in terms of how you set up your schedule. If you you know are a breakfast person, if you're a lunch person, build those perks into your practice. Take somebody else out to eat for lunch. Take a colleague out to lunch. Take a referral partner out to lunch. Just go enjoy a big breakfast by yourself. You know, I um. I had another attorney, and I think the tax tax laws on this may have changed since he said this. But he basically said, "Hey, if you drive X amount of miles from your office, um, you know, for court, then you're allowed to take meals off on your taxes." So every time that I go, you know, to a neighboring county, I I go find a good little diner and have breakfast. That was one of the perks that he created for himself. You know, other people, you know, go out to um, to eat with a colleague every single day for lunch create your own perks. You know, if, if you're driving back and forth from one place to the next and a perk is getting a coffee on the way, you know, get a coffee, make the experience enjoyable, listen to the music that you want to listen to, you know, get deep in on a podcast that you're riding around with. You, you know, just because you're driving from point A to point B, if you have the mentality that this is going to stink, then it probably will. If you have the mentality that this is my opportunity to learn, to relax, to have quiet time, to have prayer time, to have time in meditation, then you're going to be fulfilled by that time. You've got to get intentional about creating the perks that can exist in your in your line of work. I had another attorney that that um, uh, I, I saw one day, uh, uh, it was about 11 o'clock in the morning, um, you know, he had just finished his case. I said, Hey, what's, what, 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 what are you up to next? Off to another County off to, off to talk to, to a client. And he said, no, I'm headed kayaking. He was like, you know, that's part of what I love about practicing in, in criminal defense. He said, you know, I've got, um, you know, I, I don't have necessarily the, the largest volume practice. I don't have, you know, people working for me, but I make enough money to, uh, to enjoy life. And I spend, you know, uh, 20 to 30 hours a week working. And, you know, I go, I go enjoy the outdoors. We live in a great area and I, I go enjoy the outdoors. He didn't put it in quite so many words, but that's effectively what he told me that day. And then as I continued to kind of get to know him as a person, that was the perk that he created as, as a criminal defense lawyer. It wasn't about can I sign every living, breathing person that walks in the door? It was about, can I make enough money in the practice of law to support the life that I want to support? And what a dream job that is. How many people can basically just say, I'm going to work for 20 hours a week, mostly around my own schedule, and then I'm going to go kayaking. If you want to talk about living the dream, that's pretty dang near close living the dream. So, um, and and certainly for for that particular attorney, that's that's the way that he saw it. And so I think that again, we've got to get good at creating our own perks. You know, ha having the dream job isn't just about the salary. It's not just about the people that you the, that you work with. There's all kinds of opportunity to create a a more ideal work environment for yourself, a more ideal work schedule, a more ideal uh, work week. Take advantage of that. I think as criminal defense lawyers, um, we have the opportunity to really maximize that and um, and create the dream job that we want to create. So number three, create your own perks. Number four, goals change as practice matures, as your practice matures. Goals change as your practice matures. When I first started out, my goal was to get a client. You know, I had I had uh, a website. I had started figuring out how to send brochures. 
um, letters to to potential clients with traffic charges. Um, I had a business card. I had um, uh, a closet that I was going to operate out of. You know, I, I figured out the workspace. I had, you know, I had all of these ideas in terms of okay, this is what you know a business in my mind at the time was supposed to look like. These are the things that somebody that has their own shingle hanging up should think through. But I had zero clients. Nobody uh, from from the firm that I left from. I didn't have a single client that was like, okay, well, let's let's you know go have our criminal uh, defense ticket handled by by Minick. So when I when I had my first client call, sat down with them, and had them sign up, it felt incredible. You know, the the sense of fulfillment was incredible. I had no idea how much money I was going to make, or really didn't even have like a strong goal of like how much I'm shooting for in terms of making. It felt very much like I'll make as much money as people that call me. There was no goals in terms of, you know, year one revenues, year one salary. Um, you know, it was just let's let's work as hard as you know humanly possible to to make this thing um, uh, go down. And hopefully, hopefully, you know, uh, this sticks, you know, ho- hopefully I can make this work, but there was very little logistical planning. Um, you know, now there's a much more thoughtful intention about how are we going to get uh, clients to call us? How, how many cases are we trying to get, um, signed up each week? What is the uh, thought process for, you know, quarterly revenue goals? All of these things are, are, not what they were when I first started out on my own. When I made my first hire, when I brought uh, uh, Henry aboard at the office, there was so much mental turmoil about bringing him aboard. I was stressing, and it it made all the sense in the world to bring uh, Henry aboard. He he was bilingual. He would allow me to access a whole uh, a population that I could not access with a language barrier. And and you know was a great guy. You know was already uh, skilled in in the types of conversations and the the type of practice that I uh, wanted to build. I mean, there was so many things that made sense about it, but I struggled mentally because this was the first hire, and so it was just you know can't will the numbers work? What you know is there something that's going to go wrong? You know, I I analyzed it and analyzed it, and. Um, you know, last week we, uh, I, I sat down and had a, a 10 minute interview with a, a person that we're bringing aboard onto our intake team. Um, uh, uh, a couple of our, our other team members had already interviewed, had, had looked at the resume, um, uh, had done the initial screening. Um, you know, I, we, we put the offer out to her the next day and she started, um, three days later. You know, uh, put the offer to her out on Friday. Started on on the following Monday, and there was no mental turmoil. There was no thought process of, "Hey, this is something that I, um, you know, am just going to be, uh, oh my gosh, destroyed by what what what's going to happen if this doesn't go well." And that's because you know I'm at a different stage in terms of maturity of practice than I was at the time that I brought Henry aboard. And so I think that again, th- this is just a a sense of. Your dream job, your dream law firm, your dream practice is going to change as you mature as a professional and as a legal business owner. Your job is going to your what your dream job looks like is going to change. The best way to keep momentum is to have bigger goals. If you're trying to build a dream job, if you're trying to build a dream practice, the best way to keep momentum is to build bigger goals. And again, those don't have to all be, well, I'm going to expand into four states or I'm going to hire 50 people or I'm going to generate $5 million in revenue. What bigger means is going to be different for each person. Maybe it's, I want to have the best client experience that anybody charged with a crime has ever felt. I, you know, I want to uh, uh, be the most prepared attorney in the courtroom for every case. I want to be looked at as the thought leader in DWI in my three county practice area. What bigger is for any specific 
uh, person is going to depend on what that person's individual goals are, but you have to be setting the, the bar higher for yourself, for your team. If you have a team, you've got to be setting the bar higher because otherwise there is no maturity that is coming from that. And so the fulfillment level that happens when you, you reach, you know, uh, goal number one, which is to survive the first month and be able to make your rent payment to, you know, down the road, well, maybe I want to own my own law office building. Maybe down the road, I want to be able to provide my team with a 401k plan. Maybe down the road, I want to be able to uh, uh, ha have each attorney that works at the office go to these specific trainings and have these res resources at their fingertips. Whatever that next stage of development is, there is something something compelling, something uh, exciting about that kind of momentum that continues to build as you grow. So recognize that your goals, what your what your perfect practice looks like today, what your dream job looks like today is going to be different three years down the road. It's going to be different five years down the road. A decade down the road, it's going to look very different. So recognize that those goals are not always going to stay the same. And part of part of this is to echo what I said at the beginning of the podcast, the beginning of the episode, which was basically uh, that creating the dream job is a journey, not a destination. You've got to enjoy the process of being a criminal defense lawyer. Enjoying the process, identifying how to make the process more engaging. That's what building the dream job looks like. That's what building the dream practice looks like. So number four, goals change as your practice matures. Number five, focus on output, not on income. I'm going to say that again. Number five, focus on output, not on income. I think so often one of the biggest mistakes that any any person makes is they they think that their dream job will uh, be financially based. That they're they're you know what what is your dream what does your dream job look like? It almost immediately uh, for for some people is going to go to a number. You know here's here's what you know I need to support. You know so that. I can have fun in these other aspects of my life. Um, but if you're focused on income, then every client is going to feel like a burden. Oh, I have to deal with this case in order to get this paycheck. Every employee is going to feel like a burden. You know, oh, I have to uh, kind of meet payroll again this, this uh, week because Otherwise, you know, my uh, I'm going to have to do these particular tasks on my on my own. It's all going to feel uh, feel strained because it's a you know a transactional uh, a transactional relationship with your with your clients with your people. Once you focus on output, though, then the the money will follow. You know the the money will follow if you can create an exceptional culture to work in. If you can create an exceptional client experience uh, that your clients will then go and scream from the rooftops to other people that find themselves in the same legal uh, uh, frustration, the same um, legal crisis that your client is going through. Then, then the the money follows from that. But you've got to focus on what you are putting out. When we when we kind of have this like closed off, greedy sense of okay, how much money am I taking home this week? Then then we become uh, shut off from again that that kind of sense of purpose, that sense of mission. If we can focus on the output, if we can focus on others, then it's going to be so much easier to enjoy the process. It becomes this game, this um, uh, problem that that is to be solved, which is a fun problem to solve. And so that's why um, uh, why, why it's why it's so dangerous to focus on income. You know why why don't 
most lawyers charge more for their services. Why don't most lawyers charge for their services? Well, it's because they don't believe in their output. At the end of the day, I hear so many attorneys. I, I have heard so many attorneys through the year say, you know, that that price is not something that people in my market will pay. That that price is just not something that people in my uh, locational area will pay. What, what you're basically saying is that you're not delivering a, a service. You know, people will. You know, if if you're a commodity, then you know, if if you're just you know some some. Um, uh, you know, non-differentiated thing to be to be bought, then that's that's the right way to look at it. You know, if milk is going for three dollars and fifty cents a gallon, and you know one uh, uh, you know milk company is is charging twenty dollars for a gallon of milk, then most people are not going to buy that milk. That milk is is not going to come off the shelves very easily, unless there's some differentiating aspect to that to that milk right unless there's something you know if 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 that milk can make you invisible why well, hey, maybe people are interested in buying that $20 milk all of a sudden so you've got to figure out what is your what's the reason why you are different then that that comes through focusing on output it, it people are willing to pay what for what they see value in you know, are you what? What are you worth? That's really the question that is being asked. What are you worth? And when you say, "Well, I'm worth what my competitors are worth," then that seems like a pretty strange and and uh, weird answer. I mean, who who wants to buy that service? Um, you know, uh, how much is your fee? Uh, well, have you talked to any of my competitors? Yes. Um, what are they charging? Uh, you know, fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, you know, five hundred dollars and twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, okay. Well, I'll just go with the average of that. Then my fee is fifteen hundred dollars. Like that's not how fee fee quotes go. You know, but if you if you kind of mentally believe that you're only as valuable as your competitors simply because they practice in the same space, then you clearly don't think you're any different from them. And in all honesty, probably worse because. There's no focus on your end in terms of differentiation. You have to have that focus of differentiation. So the the need to to understand first of all yourself what that differentiation looks like, and then focus on on constantly improving the output. How can I make my service better for my clients? How can I make the work environment better for my team? How can I deeply impact for the better the community that I work with? How can I make the lives of judges, clerks, and DAs easier? The, the more that you focused on the output, the again, the 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 success in terms of financial success will follow that. But you have to have your mind in the right space when it comes to um, where does the money come from? It doesn't come from a focus on money. It comes from a focus on the output, on the service that you are providing. So number five, focus on output, not on income. Um, so there we go. Five, uh, five ways to build your dream job. Go make it happen. Go build your dream job. We, you know, we we, we are uh, so blessed with the work that we get to get to do. Um, in my opinion, as lawyers uh, as a whole, and and certainly as criminal defense lawyers, go build that practice that you want the practice of your dreams. If you found the information in this podcast to be valuable, I simply ask that you pay it forward and share this podcast with another member of the legal community. Also, if you would leave us a rating or a review on whatever platform you are listening on, I would greatly appreciate it.